Welcome to the fifth lecture in company law. Today we'll be looking at classes of shares, which continues on from our work on share capital and the allotment of shares last week. And we'll be looking at the creative aspect of structuring the rights in shares to meet the needs of clients who come to their attorney when setting up a company. So the share of stock defines most rights of the member. We have a show in action, as I explained last week, and this thing only it can be exercised as provided for by law. And what we are receiving through this property right is profits on a regular basis, collective control of the company, liquidation, and the right to exclude persons damaging the company. So let's look at those a bit more closely because it will be these rights that you work with in arranging shares into a class. So we have the rights in shares, as I said, which are profits, the right to receive a distribution annually or whenever profits are made. And this is a regular recurring payment. We have collective control that will generally be voting rights exercised in the meeting of the members. Liquidation, which is also an economic right like profits, however, it is a one-time payment when the company is wound up and the share capital is returned to the members if there is any share capital left after the creditors have been paid. And then the right to exclude, which is mainly a derivative action filed against a director who has not protected the company adequately, allowing the shareholder to step in to ask the court to discipline the director and protect the company. So why do we use different classes of shares? We use them because basically the rights are tools to structure cash flow and control rights in different arrangements to meet different needs. Some members want control of the company. Others have no time for that and are interested in a return of regular dividends from the company. All members would like information and the ability to sue if their rights are being abused. And those last two rights, information and the right to exclude or the right to file action are not generally negotiable in classes of shares. However, the right to vote at meetings, the right to receive dividends, and the right to receive liquidation proceeds are the primary focus of our structuring of classes of shares. Shares of a given class will be treated equally. We say peri passu, that's, that's a sort of a French Latinized word which uh, refers to walking together with no one in front of the other. You take steps, passu, peri, of equal importance. I advise you strongly to look at the video that Mr. Patrick Walsh of Bird and Bird has provided us. You'll see it at this link. Use it on the PDF, which will be much easier to access. And try to understand his view as a practitioner advising both investors and companies seeking investors and arranging the rights that company law will allow in a way that meets the needs of both investor and company. He compares it to being a chef arranging different in ingredients. And I think you'll find when you finish this lecture that that is a very accurate comparison. If you're looking for a class of shares, the company documents will provide that. But if you want to understand what is a class of shares, look at the ordinance itself, section 177, that defines a class of shares as the rights of the holder of that share as a member 
of the company being uniform. Right? So if we have a class of shares, we will have a class of rights that are that are exercisable by the, the holder of the share as a member of the company. The articles will let you know if a company has specific classes of shares, but the articles will not give you full information. If you look at the company's registry at any allotment made, any return on, on allotment, you will see that a statement of capital accompanies that under Section 201 of the company's ordinance, and a statement of capital is very detailed with regard to all of the voting and economic rights found in a class of shares. If there are share certificates, they will specify that it is a class of shares and it has special rights. And if the class of shares that you're dealing with have no votes, then the law expressly requires that you be warned and that will be done on the certificate if the company issues certificates. The Cumbrian case is, as you see, 1986, significantly older than our company's ordinance, but is a very useful discussion of what exactly is a class of shares. The problem in Cumbrian was that one company invested some money in another, that is Cumbrian invested in Cumbrian and Westmoreland, which I'll refer to as C&W, and Cumbrian requested some rights in return. They also agreed to close their own newspaper, combining efforts to publish one newspaper in the Cumbrian area in northern UK. So when Cumbrian invested funds, they received certain rights specified in the Articles of Association. Preemption rights on new shares, transfer restrictions on existing shares, and the right to appoint a director if Cumbrian maintained a holding in CNW at or exceeding 10%. Now the problem arose in the litigation regards the attempt by CNW to alter its Articles of Association to remove these rights. Cumbrian asserts that they are class rights and therefore Cumbrian has the right to block the removal unless it consents to it. And CNW asserts that no, these are not class rights because they do not adhere to the shares themselves, but are personal rights given to Cumbrian as a favor. And that is the question the court addressed. The court found three basic kinds of rights. One would be the rights that are indeed transferable, attached to certain share certificates. And these are not questioned, and that's not what we have in this particular case. The other were rights that do not regard a person qua member, so that what we have is something like, and the court discusses the Ely decision, in Ely, a, an investor in a company is given the job of company counsel. When the company decides to remove Mr. Ely from the job of company counsel, he complains that it is a class right and it cannot be taken away without his consent. The court found that no, this was a job. It was not a class right adhering to shares because it was not the kind of right a member would have in a company. And think about, as we've discussed at great length, the rights that are commonly found in shares. They do not include the rights to be employed by the company. Now, the third kind of right is right which are membership rights, such as appointing directors, such as transferring one's shares, but they attach to the shares only 
if a specific person holds those shares. CNW asserted that those are not class rights. Cumbrian asserted they are. The court found that indeed these rights are class rights. And these are common rights if you see the utility as well. An investor seeks to help a company but wants some protection. The company agrees that class rights will be created for this rescue investor. And the rescue investor, therefore, can be assured that the rights will not be taken away from him because they are indeed class rights subject to the protections provided in the law. If the rescue investor were not to receive class rights, then once the company is on its feet again, it could simply take those rights away, which would discourage rescue investors and make the company law cumbersome and unworkable. That's why you can see that the third category of rights found in the Cumbrian decision are indeed both useful and rational. I'm confident that these rights fit into the definition of 177, 177 Companies' Ordinance.